Hello everyone, Mr. Darasi is back uh, here to conclude our lecture on cell division, finishing out the topic of mutations and karyotyping in reference to what happens when during meiosis you produce a sperm or egg cell that has one too many or one too few chromosomes, which could lead to a disease or disorder. So we'll start with just, again, the basic definition for a mutation. All right, a mutation is any change or error in the sequence of DNA of an individual. Our focus was really mainly on one or two letters getting changed, changing one or two codons and seeing how that could change a, a protein. But now we're going to be talking about tens of thousands, if not millions of bases, where we change an entire chromosome, not just one gene or protein, but hundreds of genes and hundreds of proteins that could lead to significant issues. So when we discuss a chromosomal mutation, we're going to use a vocab term called non-disjunction. This is in reference to a mutation, but it's going to be on a more grand scale. It's going to be more on the chromosomal scale. So non-disjunction refers to the failure of chromosomes to separate properly during meiosis II in particular. So for example, if you look up here at this picture, I have one cell up here. Let's pretend this is one cell that was produced already from meiosis one. So I would have went from four chromosomes down to two, but now we have to perform meiosis two so we can get rid of, rid of and split these sister chromatid pairs. So after meiosis two happens, instead of getting two cells that have just one pink and one bluish green or maybe teal color chromosome, you produce now one cell that has three chromosomes. So we got both copies of this chromosome instead of just one. And then on top of it, we got one version of this chromosome here. Well, this cell only got one version of the pink chromosome and nothing from the teal one. These are non-disjunctions. You produce here what's called a trisomy condition. So you have three instead of two. And over here, you have what's called a monosome. You only have one when you should have two. These could lead to significant conditions. Let's say if these are sperm, and either one of these out of millions of sperm are what actually fertilize an egg, you will have a child with a genetic disorder. So as I just mentioned, it's going to result in an extra or missing chromosome. Could be addition. You could have instead of one extra, you could have two extras or three extras. All right, but anything more or less than what you need is going to be a significant condition, leading to disorders such as trisomy 21 and Turner's. Trisomy 21 means you have three number 21 chromosomes. Turner syndrome affects females. Instead of having two X sex chromosomes, they only have one. Again, this can happen because if we focus on meiosis, during synapsis, forming tetrads, crossing over, splitting the homologous pairs or tetrads during meiosis one, and then splitting the sister chromatid pairs during meiosis two, there are a ton of chances for chromosomes to separate uh, improperly, leading to some type of non-disjunction or chromosomal disorder. The one way we can decide or figure out if an individual or even an unborn child perhaps has a non-disjunction or chromosomal disorder is we're going to perform a test called a karyotype. All right, so you got to remember this word here, karyotype. It is a picture of an individual's chromosomes that were taken during specifically metaphase of mitosis. So I could take a swab of your cheek cells. I could take some of your blood, get those cells, take a picture of them while they're going through mitosis, particularly metaphase, and then I can examine them and I can look at them to make sure that you have just the right amount of chromosomes, a total of 46, nothing less, nothing more. That'd be the goal. If I wanted to test a baby, let's say a female is pregnant, I could perform a process called amniocentesis where I actually insert a needle into her abdomen, remove some of the amniotic fluid that the baby's floating in. In this fluid will be some skin cells that have come off the baby since it's growing rapidly. And then I could take a picture of that baby's skin cells from the amniotic fluid, look for a metaphase of mitosis, and get their chromosomes there too. 
ultimately you're doing this for two reasons. Number one, you want to figure out does this child or individual have a chromosomal disorder or abnormality? That's the number one and probably the most important reason you would perform this karyotype. Now, when you look at the chromosomes, they should, if it's a human, could be different if it's not a human, but we should have, as we know, a total of 46 chromosomes that we can break down into 23 homologous pairs. So we really only have 23 unique chromosomes, but we have two versions for every chromosome type for a total of 46. Now, what we need to take into consideration here is this. The first 22 pairs of chromosomes, so chromosome type number one, the chromosome type number 22, we call these the autosomes or autosomal chromosomes. These are the automatic chromosomes. These are the chromosomes that you need to build a basic body plan. All of us need skin. All of us need a heart. All of us need a liver, etc. So all of our information is pretty much going to be 99.9% .9 the same for these first 22 pairs of chromosomes. Slight differences here and there, maybe a tenth of a percent that give you blonde hair versus black hair or brown eyes versus blue eyes, but the majority of our information on the autosomal chromosomes are exactly the same. The 23rd pair of chromosomes are the sex chromosomes. So this would be the second reason why you'd perform a karyotype besides figuring out if that child has a chromosomal abnormality. Maybe you're just concerned about what the sex of the baby is. If it's a male, they'll have an X and a Y chromosome for their sex chromosomes. If it's a female, they'll have two Xs. Now, down below, this is a picture of a karyotype. It's not an actual one, it's an animated one, but it'll serve our purposes for right now. So, number one chromosome type, through type 22, we always kind of pair them up and put them in descending size order, getting to the smallest. All right, so chromosomes 1 through 22 are your autosomes. So you have 22 autosomal pairs, or a total of 44 autosomal chromosomes. Again, if I have 1 through 22 pairs to prepare, 2 times... 22 will be a total of 44. The 46 total chromosomes comes when we take into account the sex chromosomes, which were always our 23rd pair, always in the bottom right-hand corner. This individual has an X and a Y. The Y is always much smaller than the X chromosome and is unique. It doesn't look like any of the other autosomal chromosomes. This is going to be a boy at this point, especially if it's a baby who hasn't been born yet. So if I were to look at this karyotype right now, and I can see that there's only two chromosomes or homologous pair for all 22 types. I'm not missing one. I don't have three for one when I should only have two. And I have one X and one Y. I would say this is a healthy baby boy who has no chromosomal abnormalities. But what happens if there is? Let's take a look at some examples. So here's example number one. So these are pictures of actual chromosomes. They're not going to be as pretty as the last slide. But when we look, again, chromosome type number 1 through 22 down here. Here's your autosomal chromosomes. I can see that there is a homologous pair for all 22 types. Ignore this over here. This is just size reference. But I don't care if they're bent a little bit, but I can see that they're all intact. I'm not missing half of one. Maybe that part's not cut off. They're all intact, 1 through 22. I don't care that maybe this one is bent a little bit, doesn't matter, it's still there. So I can see there's nothing wrong with this individual in regards to chromosomes 1 through 22, but look at the sex chromosomes. Right here in particular. There's only one X and no Y. This is going to be a girl, because there's an X chromosome and no Y, but she should have two X chromosomes, not one. So this girl is going to have a condition called Turner's Syndrome. And I won't go into the details of what this person would have to deal with as a chromosomal disease, but she definitely has a disorder, and it's called Turner's Syndrome because there's only one X chromosome. Let's take a look at another example. Take a moment and look at all the chromosomes. Look at the autosomal ones first, 1 through 22, then the sex chromosomes. 
this child is not normal, they are going to have a genetic disorder. Can you figure out what it is? It's right here. Instead of two, they have three number 21 chromosomes. They're going to have Down syndrome, or trisomy 21 is the technical term. And we've already talked about Down syndrome several times in class this year. It's a boy. You see here there's one X and one Y. So it's a boy who has Down's syndrome. Example number three, take a look real fast. Again, look at chromosome pairs 1 through 22 first. I don't see any missing chromosomes or extra chromosomes from number 1 through 22. So let's put our focus down here at the sex chromosomes. There's a Y, I can see. But look right here. There's two X's. So that means you have a boy, because there is an X and a Y, but you have two X's. So this is going to be a boy who has a condition called Kleinfelter's syndrome. All right, so on your worksheets and the virtual lab that you're going to be doing, you're going to have to maybe diagnose a couple of these similar conditions that we're talking about. You need to visually see what's going on. You can see right here again, instead of one X and one Y, you have two X's and a Y. This will be a boy who has something called Kleinfelter's. And our last example, give you a moment to look over this. This is not a normal person. They are abnormal and have a disease. If we figure out sex first, there's no X. I'm sorry, there's no Y chromosome, but I do have two X's. So this is a girl. But right up here, circling chromosome type number 18. I have three number 18s, not two. So that means the sperm or egg from mom or dad gave two number 18s instead of one. So now we have what's called trisomy 18, or the official term is Edwards syndrome. So again, what I want you to get from this for karyotypes is it's a failure of chromosomes to separate during meiosis two. And then after fertilization, a child will get one too many or one too few chromosomes leading to a chromosomal abnormality or disease. And we can detect that by performing what we call a karyotype. Thank you very much for listening, and please use this lecture to help you with your worksheet and virtual lab that are posted for this week. Thank you.